Okay, to delve more into what may be swaying voters the most right now, we're joined by Daniel Menenkoff. He's head of U.S. forecasting at the Research Seminar in Quantitative Economics at the University of Michigan. Welcome back, Daniel. Uh, good to see you again. Thanks for having me. Okay, the state of the economy is obviously important to voters. So everybody knows that, always has been. So how may they perceive the third quarter GPD, GDP numbers that just came out? Uh, no, numbers don't lie. And if, if you look at where things are, the economy is growing. Inflation is very much under control. But at the end of the day, is that going to make a difference to Democrats or Republicans? Right. So any time we get a release with GDP growth near 3%, it's a good day, regardless of what, I mean, the markets were expecting uh, right at the point of release. Now, uh, most people probably care a lot more about their personal financial situation and what's happening in the labor market than the uh, just GDP is basically an abstract number that does not impact anybody's well-being directly. So what they care about more is probably what's going to come out on Friday, that is the jobs report, and right. more importantly, where the unemployment rate is headed. Yeah, so, I mean, we heard how many people are just worried that the economy is not going in the right direction, no matter what the numbers show. So the average voter, do you believe they're actually comparing economic data and performance to form their views on candidates? And, and in all honesty, voters seemingly need to do their own research because it's very easy for candidates to skew the truth, and in some cases, simply out and out not tell the truth. Right. Well, I remember that about 40 million people have voted already, uh, either by mail or, or, or just walked into uh, a polling location. So whatever gets released will not affect their vote. Uh, in general, a lot of people don't keep track of economic statistics. So if, if, if you look at the surveys of uh, inflation expectations, there would be people who think inflation is going to come out like 30 percent over the next year. So it, What's, what's more important to them is how much their own wages are raising or keeping up with inflation or not. Uh, what's happening in the neighborhoods in terms of uh, how many of their friends are unemployed or have been unemployed for a long time and are unable to find jobs. And that's been happening lately. So, I mean, the labor market has cooled and a lot of people are uh, have been unemployed for a while. So it's, it's and I mean, the, the economy is very, very diverse. So we may say that overall prices, uh, if overall inflation is slowing, but uh, prices came up on average maybe 20 percent over the last uh, five years. But for many people, uh, their own consumption bundle will probably have come up 40 percent and there'll be people who only saw 10 percent inflation. So individual experiences will be very, very diverse. And it's not surprising that large uh, proportions of population are very unhappy with what they've been seeing over the past several years. They'll, there are people who are happy. Yeah. But it's, it's like the average temperature in a hospital between the already dead and those running fever. Dan, 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 Daniel, what do we know about each candidate's proposed economic policy? Because both are promising tax cuts. Both say they are the one to lead uh, the country moving forward. But Trump and Harris, both their plans have the potential to swell the national debt each by trillions of dollars. Right. So we have not seen uh, any of them promise how they're going to pay for things that they would like they want us to uh, believe. So Trump has promised a further corporate rate tax cut from the current uh, level to about 15 percent for domestically for domestic corporations. He promised to reverse the uh, SALT, that is the state and local tax deduction that he himself neutered uh, in, in, in 2018. He promised uh, a lot of things with uh, tariffs, which will definitely affect price levels and maybe employment. Mm -hmm. uh, Harris promised um, like $24,000 first home time buyer credit, which is probably going to make prices even higher. Uh, she promised to expand uh, child care uh, tax credit, which will be reasonably expensive. Uh, Trump promised uh, stop, uh, to, to, to stop taxing Social Security benefits, which will be immensely expensive if implemented. So. It, it, Whatever they are promising, a lot of it is unfunded yeah. uh, promises, which will have to be somehow paid for eventually. Maybe not immediately, because uh, the, the, the U.S. economy has a large borrowing capacity. But at some point, okay. there will be a day of reckoning. OK, so we, we know that the job market's cooled, and we only have about a minute left. But the Federal Reserve's preferred inflation gauge, the PCE index for September, comes out on Thursday. What are economists expecting from it? 
And at this point, is it going to make a difference in the election? Um, in the election, probably not, but it could directly feed into interest rates that people pay for mortgages. And looking, so basically, we do know what the quarterly average of PCE uh, was. Uh, we found it out today. We know the previous two readings for uh, July and August. So it looks like it's going to be a pretty hot reading. Uh, and if that is followed up by a hot jobs report on Friday, I think uh, mortgage rates are going to come up even further than they had in the pre in the previous preceding well, couple of weeks. Right. So that's probably going to make the Fed's jobs a little bit harder. Okay. Um, Daniel Manikoff, as always, a pleasure. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Let's hope this is wrapped up next Tuesday night and we can look forward right. to Let's the, hope. the new administration. Amen okay. to that. Thank you very much, my friend. We appreciate it.